Thanks, Bob. Day two of the winter meetings, and the story continues to be Aaron Judge. A lot of things going on throughout the course of the day, a lot of buzz as to where he is going to land. So, Tim, I'll ask you, what's it been like in that room today? Uh, you know, it's it's the wait-and-see game. Obviously, Aaron Judge coming off an unbelievable year. Tremendous human being. Uh, obviously has a lot of options in front of them. So it, it's wait and see. I mean, we're trying to do a lot of different things. We're meeting with different organizations. We're talking about different free agents. Uh, but as we all know, a lot of things that we are or are not going to do depend on what his decision will be. So we're waiting patiently. And and uh, there's a lot of guys that are locked in on Twitter and every <laughs> every other thing just trying to find out what's going on. But, you know, we'll wait and see what Hal and Brian tell the room. We know that Judge is the number one story and something that the Yankees would like to get done. One thing you already have gotten done this season or this offseason was re-signing Anthony Rizzo. You played the infield at the major league level. Mm -hmm. How much value is it to have a guy like Rizzo at first base and also in the clubhouse? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, he's, he's been a leader. He's been that left-handed bat. Uh, when I was scouting the National League, obviously I had a chance to see Riz play quite a bit. So, you know, the swing... The one thing about it, his swing plays in Yankee Stadium because obviously the short porch, but he also brings contact, changing of approach, opens up the field, can go the other way. He's very good against left-handed pitching, so there's no splits that you know we can attack a lineup against us with. But when it's all said and done, the biggest thing that I think he brings is defense at first base. And when you start looking at bringing up younger prospects, middle of the infield prospects, whether it's Peraza, Volpe, Cabrera, and now you have a plus defender over there that can turn a potential mistake into an out means a lot to me and the, and the Yankee organization. Tim, I spoke to you during spring training about some of those young middle infielders, and one guy that you kept mentioning was Peraza. What was it about him that told you that you thought he could get to the major league level last season, and what is it about his game that you like? Yeah, I mean, I, I think what's interesting is we continually try to develop at least one impact guy each year that can come up and eventually be an impact type of guy on a roster for a long time. I watch Peraza play, and I see upside on both sides of the ball. I see a guy that has power potential, playing a premium position in the middle of the diamond, has range, has a plus arm, um, a great kid, goes about it the right way. Does he have a lot of things that he's going to continue to develop? Absolutely. I think he can control the zone. I, can, I think he can probably control his aggression. Uh, but again, when you're a young man coming to the big leagues, he wants a hit. So to me, it's a matter of you know, control the zone a little bit, control the aggression a little bit, and I think we have big upside coming. You talk about controlling the zone. Brian Cashman, Aaron Boone, even Hal Steinbrenner have talked about cutting down on strikeouts, more yeah. contact. I know it's easier said than done, but what are some things the organization can try and do to make that happen? Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's a Yankee problem. It's a problem across the game. I'm, I'm sure fans are tired of watching Swing and Miss. Uh, I, I can tell you being inside the industry, uh, it's, it's hard to watch at times. But to me, it's about what can you do to hit with two strikes? It's approach. It's swing mechanics. Uh, I was talking with Aaron Boone last night, and the one thing I think is very important is at some point you turn an I at bat into a team at bat. And the way you can do that is basically master your B swing. You go up there with a, a situation where you watch, like Glaber Torres, for example, there's times when you see him with a high leg kick, and you see him with a, with a little bit bigger swing, and then you see him at times control his lower half and adjust his sights to the right center. So to me, it's a change in swing mechanics, a change in approach, both of which can uh, help at the ball skills. Mm -hmm. As a whole, has the philosophy, the approach as a team evolved and changed over the years? Well, I... I think one thing that I've seen from growing up watching the game, the Big Red Machine, to eventually playing the game, then being in player development, and now in the scouting and front office world, the one thing that I think has changed a lot is hitters one through nine have the ability to hit the ball in the seats. For a long time, there was only the three hole, the four hole, the five hitter that had the power. So a lot of times... The analytics say, hey, if you can hit it in the seats, stay with that type of approach. And as guys, you know, have gotten bigger and stronger and the ballparks have maybe got a little smaller and maybe the ball is flying a little bit more, you know, more guys have the ability to hit in the seats. That's why we've seen the approach 
stay the way it has been the last three, four, five years. Mm -hmm. Tim, thanks for stopping by, and you're going to text us, right, if anything goes on in that yeah. room? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You guys will probably know before I will. <laughs> I hope you're right. I hope he's right. Time will tell. Uh, Bob will send it back to you.